Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back to Health and Fasting, this series where we're discussing issues related to health and fasting. In this episode, we're going to be talking about tips for trying to manage a long fast and what that means for us practically. So as we know, in the UK, in the summer, the days are 18 to 19 hours long and we are obliged to fast from dawn to dusk. So that means 18 hours of fasting, 18 hours without food, 18 hours without water, and possibly during that time, we'll be having to go about a normal day-to-day -day life and going to work or college or school or whatever it happens to be. So this can be a very stressful time, both physically and mentally for us. So hopefully we're going to examine some issues and practical tips that might help us think about this and think how we can try and manage and deal with this. So some of the things that might be worth considering are if you, when you know Ramadan is coming, speak to your boss or your work colleagues and say, look, the month of fasting is coming. Is it possible if, we, if there's a long, a long project or a difficult assignment coming up, is it possible that we can reschedule this to another time, either we do it before Ramadan or after Ramadan, so that we are not going to be stressed at the time of fasting. Now if that's possible to have a, have a chat with your colleagues or your boss and you can come to some mutual agreement, that will hopefully help you and at least take the stress of that work-related issue off of you. So that's worth discussing with your colleagues and in the UK, everyone is aware of Ramadan, everyone knows the month of fasting is coming and they should be aware of that and hopefully if you have an accommodating workplace, your colleagues and boss may be able to help you and reschedule some of the work or ask colleagues to help you or help you split the work in a more manageable fashion. So that's something to try and consider in terms of projects and assignments and deadlines. Now, I remember I heard on the news that uh, in terms of the GCSE examinations, which are in May, June time, the actual college, the board of examinations, were actually thinking of postponing the exams for Muslim students so that actually all students would do their exams at a later time. So that's actually a good initiative that was taken by the exam boards and they realised that a large percentage of their students were Muslims and they were actually willing to delay the exams so that they would hopefully not be disadvantaged by taking their exams during long fasting periods because 15, 16, both boys and girls are obliged to fast and they would have to go through long fast and study for exams and then do long stressful exams two, three hour exam papers whilst they're fasting, which will definitely impair their performance. So the examination boards were willing to consider that. So it's not impossible that your workplace or school or college might be able to help you think about practical tips and ways you can deal with those sorts of issues. Another issue to consider is, now this does depend on the kind of job you do, but if you work shift pattern, is it possible for you to do a shift where you are doing your shift later or in the evening or overnight. So for example, if you are a train driver or someone who is involved in some sort of public service where there's a shift pattern, are you able to arrange with your colleagues and workplace that you do a shift where you will actually more likely to have eaten and be awake and alert rather than being uh, trying to keep awake during the day, come home, uh, open your fast and then try and sleep so that you're having very disturbed sleep and also impaired concentration at work. So if you are someone who does shift work, that's worth discussing with your colleagues again in advance of the month of fasting to say, can we come to some arrangement where I do the late shifts for this month and then you take on the early shift and then next month we'll swap and I'll do your early shifts, uh, I'll do your late shift and you do my early shifts. So that may be something you can come to arrangement with your colleagues there. Now something else that someone mentioned to me is uh, are you able to take a vacation during this time? So are you able to take your annual leave during the month of fasting? So if that's the case, then you don't have to worry at all because you're on annual leave, you don't have to go into work, you can relax more at home, spend time with your family, go to the mosque, have time to spend with your community. And the work issue is put aside. So again, depending on the workplace 
and on the flexibility and the number of employees and your relationship with your colleagues, you may be able to schedule your annual leave at the time of Ramadan and hopefully that will overcome all the problems and you'll be able to have a relaxed and fruitful Ramadan. So that's another thing that might be worthwhile considering. Now, someone else mentioned to me, I am not sure about this, but this will be something you would need to refer to your scholars to, is that if you really have difficulty and you have a job where you can't accommodate, where your job place can't accommodate any of these requests, is it possible for you to fast a shorter day? Because I have been told by scholars that this may be a possibility, but this depends on the marja you follow and it depends on who you turn to for advice. So can you fast what would be considered a normal day, i.e. from 7 a.m. till 7, 8 p.m.? Because from my understanding in the Quran, it doesn't say the length of the day, it just says the day. So this is something that may be worthwhile you asking a scholar or speaking to someone who has knowledge about these things and saying, is it possible for me to take this option and fast a period of time which would be considered a day, but it's not actually dawn to dusk. So that's something that is worthwhile inquiring about if you can't do any of these other things where you can speak to your colleagues and try and make arrangements with them. So that is something that you would need to seek religious advice about and ask if that is something that's permissible for you. Another thing to consider is that if you travel, so if you leave before Zohar and arrive back after Zohar, this would technically invalidate your fast. So this is a way that you could perhaps use this rule to invalidate the fast but make it up at another time in the year when the fasts are not so long. So for example, when the fasts are in summer, you use this travelling exception and then make up the fasts in winter. But of course, as with all religious matters, it is important that you check with your scholar whether this is allowed for you and how you would exercise this rule. So, but that is something to think about and if you really have a stressful job or a job where you have to be alert and fully awake and able to concentrate during the day, this may be something that you can try or certainly consider, but please do refer to your scholar and make sure that you are doing so correctly. Okay. Other things to think about that might help you in these long fasts is thinking about the types of food that is worthwhile avoiding. So it's certainly in the Asian community, I know we love hot spicy food, we love food with lots of uh, what we call masala, which is flavour and spices. So these foods sometimes make things like indigestion worse and when you're eating very late, it's worthwhile trying to avoid these foods and eat food that is more bland. So this will hopefully not be so hard on the stomach and help you digest the food more easily and maybe something worthwhile considering in terms of trying to make the fast easier for you dealing with these long hours and long fasts. So that's worthwhile considering and thinking about that. Also it may be worth thinking about some medications that might help you in terms of symptoms like indigestion. So things like uh, something called Gaviscon which is a common uh, medication over the counter, another medication called Zantac. Both of these medications work on acid and help prevent problems like acid reflux and issues such as that. So they may be worth considering and going to your chemist to discuss whether you can get some of those Try taking them during Ramadan, see if it helps with problems like acid reflux and burning and indigestion. Another issue to think about is, is it possible for you to sleep during the day? Now again, if you are able to accommodate this with your workplace, is it possible to have a longer lunch time? Obviously during lunch you'll not be eating, but can you use that time to have a nap, have a lie down, take some time out? So is there a room at the office, is there a place where you can go and just have a quiet lie down for half an hour, one hour during the time that everyone else is having lunch? So again, this is something that you might be able to discuss with your workplace and see can they help you, can they accommodate this request for you? And you may find that if you speak to them in advance, they may be able to make arrangements for you so that you can sleep and have some rest during the day. So if we look at Mediterranean countries like Italy and Spain, they have this concept of the siesta built into the day anyway, not that they're fasting, just that their day normally has a period in the middle of the afternoon where they will rest and actually everything will close, all the businesses will close, all of the offices will close and everyone will have a rest for an hour or so. And this has been shown in evidence to be very restful and very helpful and beneficial for the health. So actually this may be something that will be useful for you long term, but obviously 
in the UK we can't do this, but maybe during Ramadan you can speak to your office, speak to your workplace, speak to your colleagues and say, is it possible that you could have a quiet room where you can just sleep, have a lie down for an hour or so and try and rest so you're more able and awake and alert when you go back to work in the afternoon. So these are some more useful tips that might be worthwhile considering in terms of trying to accommodate and help you manage these long and difficult fasts. Another thing to consider, which I personally do myself, is just eating once. So I will just eat at the time of iftar, when we uh, open the fast. So I will just eat then, and I will not eat at seri time. So I find that this for me personally means that my stomach is not so full because I can't eat at uh, 10 o'clock at night and then get up and eat again at 2 a.m. I find that is too heavy on my stomach and I just can't manage that. Now, I'm not suggesting that everyone do this, but this is something to consider, particularly with such a short time in between the opening and the breaking of the fast. So it's worthwhile thinking about that, seeing eating a slightly larger meal at iftar and then not eating anything at seri. Although we've discussed that Ideally, it's better to eat more at Seri, but personally, I find that I can't eat in the morning after having eaten very late at night time. So that's something that I personally do, and it may be worthwhile seeing how you manage that yourself with your schedule, with your day-to-day -day work life balance, and seeing if that's something that might be helpful for you. So to summarize, what we've discussed in this episode is looking at some practical tips to help you managing these long fasts. So things that we've discussed is trying to change your work pattern, so if you work shifts, trying to change your shift where you might work a shift later when you've eaten and you're awake and alert, trying to discuss sh uh, scheduling work for before or after Ramadan so you don't have big projects or deadlines during the fast, if you're at college or university, seeing if they can change the exam times at the time when you're fasting, seeing if there's any way that you can uh, accommodate that, where they can accommodate that in terms of helping you revise at a different time. I've also discussed whether it's possible that you take a vacation so that you don't go to work, you have your annual leave then and you're able to use that to then be able to fast. And also we've talked about things like being able to sleep during the day, whether there's anywhere in the office so you can rest, just take a break and be awake and alert when you then go back to work for the afternoon. These are some useful things that might be helpful for you to consider. I hope that these tips will be able to be helpful for you and you'll be able to use these and it'll help you have a health, healthy and fulfilling fast. And we look forward to seeing you in another program where we'll be discussing more issues of health and fasting. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.